another Class 66 Rox review. Now in this review, I'm not looking at a locomotive, I'm not looking at an Eddie Stobart truck, but I am looking at a book which I read, and this particular book is the Traction Recognition 2nd Edition by Colin J. Marsden. Now, as you may have seen on my channel, um, I have got the 1st edition of this book, so I highly recommend the 2nd edition to anyone, and the 1st edition. So, let's have a look at this book then. So, as we can see, it is a hardback book, so let's take a look at it. Now, I'm not going to show you all the locos in it, but I'm just going to show you a select few, as I think reviewing the entire book would take me hours, literally. So, the first loco we come to is the Class 08 Shunter. Now, each locomotive on each page has a fully detailed specification of each locomotive. So if you're really interested in reading about it, then it's all here for you to read. The second thing is, here, that you have different views, like the front, the sides, and again, the front. Now, I have got OO gauge locomotives and an OO gauge model railway layout, so if the loco didn't come with like many detailing instructions, then I get this book out, and I actually read through and look at the buffer beam detailing. And then I just put the relevant detailing onto my locomotives, so it looks really realistic. So, let's move on. As you can see, there's all different variations of the Class 8. Um, companies include Freightliner, EWS, and they use them. So, obviously, we've got the Class 20, mainly used by direct rail services. Um, I have seen a few of them parked up at Gresty Lane and Crew the DRS depot but I've not actually come across any running as of yet so I'll perhaps have to keep a look out next time I'm over there so let's skip a few pages and move on to the class 37 if we can find the right page and here we are the class 37 and 97.3 but I'm not too sure what the 973 means. But if you do know, please leave your comments below. So, as you can see, that is a detailed specification. All this of two pages, um, or half a page each. This is everything you need to know about the Class 37, and there's absolutely loads in this book. So, as you can see, again, we've got the different variations of the Class 37. We've got DRS. BR Blue with large logo, um, West Coast Railways. So, this is what I was mentioning earlier about the buffer beam detailing because you can get a really in depth analysis of the buffer beam parts that actually go on the front of these locomotives. So, that's really, really handy. As you can see again, that's I think that's the DRS version. But I think that might be what 97.3 means that the Headlamp design is a bit different because if you look at that one, it's different again. But not to worry. So then we, I'll just show you this one here. That's a rail freight class 37, by the way. And um, so now we'll just move on a bit further. Um, we'll go past the class 45, uh, past the 47, and we'll try get past the 52 which is the western hydraulic and I'll try and find you aha it's here, the class 56 this is a locomotive that we have got on the layout and as you can see this buffer beam detailing picture is absolutely brilliant for if you're detailing them um, companies which have used them are Virgin but they were called the Thunderbirds and they were used as breakdown trains um, Lodol used them um, and I think some others use them. Oh no, um, no, I'm wrong. Virgin did not use the class 56, they used the class 57. It's just me getting confused again. I apologize for that, and I'll hopefully be able to show you the Virgin class 57. And there it is. So, ignore what I said before Virgin didn't use 56s. It's just me. I, there's that many classes in this book, it's easy to get muddled up. But this particular one I think is Lady Penelope, hence the pink name badge. 
Um, I have seen Gordon Tracy in crew parked up, um, so I'll have to go over to crew again sometimes so if I can spot any more of them. But as you can see again, there's just absolutely loads of information and facts about the Class 57. So Freightliner have um, used the 57 as well. Um, I don't think I mentioned that for the Class 56, but if I did, I apologise. Freightliner don't use 56s, they use 57s. Um, but again, you can see the detailing on it. Um, I don't think there's a picture of the Freightliner 57 in here. No, there isn't, unfortunately. So then we move to the Class 58. Um, these were exported out of the UK. But EWS and EW and S liveries were applied to them when they were in Britain. So that, then we go past the class 59, as you can see. Recent class 59s include DB Schenker Red Shed livery and EWS, which some of you may have seen. I think some are still up and down today, I'm not too sure. Right, so the next locomotive, the class 60. Um, I've seen some in EWS and Recently I've seen some in DB Schenker. Now I like both liveries, um, so I can't really fault either of them. The Class 60 is just an awesome locomotive. And I think it's one of the best ones that I've seen so far. Um, obviously apart from the Class 66. So obviously you can see there, that's the load all one. So, let's move past the Class 60 and go to the Class 66. My favourite locomotive. Apart from um, the 60s and the 70s. But hence, this is why what my channel was named after, Class 66 Rocks. Obviously, as you can see, there's all different variations. Um, from Freightliner to EWS to Direct Rail Services to GBRF. Uh, the list is endless. Even Fastline Freight had one before they went into liquidation. But as you can see, there's loads of pictures um, and guides about the Class 66. So, if we turn the page, we can see again, we've got the DB Schenker Class 66. Um, one I forgot to mention, Colas Rail, just there. Um, and obviously the names they've been named after. Obviously Crew Regeneration, Lafarge Quorn, and Metronet Pathfinder. So, now, let's go past that, and let's go on to the Class 67 quickly. Um, these are obviously mainly used as mail trains um, so you may have seen them up and down the country um, or pulling carriages on excursion tours but I have seen one in crew and um, you do see them quite regularly so that's that so the next locomotive we're going to have a look at is the class 70 as we can see here uh, famously called the Power Hall because Freightliner have quite a few of them um, and I think they've got more power than a Class 66 so I hear um, but these now are quite often used by Freightliner so now let's I'll just show you one more um, so if I can just find it it should be towards the back obviously we've got the Class 220 Voyagers here. Um, there is the 221, Class 221, which is just here, the Super Voyager. Um, Virgin Trains run this, as well as Bombardier in cross country livery. Um, I think the 220s are a 4 car DMU and the 221s are a 5 car DMU. Um, and I have seen absolutely loads, and there is videos on my channel if you wish to watch them. So the last loco I am going to show you is. The class 390 Pendolino. Now these are widely seen up and down the UK, on the West Coast Main Line and all over the country really. Um, I am hoping to go on one eventually, so I'll be able to film it on board whilst travelling. Um, but as you can see, there's two variations. Um, there's the Alston livery Pendolino and there's the standard Virgin livery Pendolino. But again, there's loads of facts about this locomotive and every single one in this book. Um, but as you can see, there's just that many. I could go on for hours mentioning them all, but I'm not going to.
But that's it basically, the Traction Recognition 2nd Edition hardback boot by Callum J. Marston.